Amen. It's been a lovely time together, hasn't it, so far? And it's so, so powerful just what, um, what God's doing and, and uh, how, he's, how he's moving. It's just really, um, really awesome. It's um, so good to have a few new little faces with us here today. We've got, um, we've got Jaden, John and Scovia's little man, Jaden. We want to welcome him to, uh, to church this morning. It's so good to, um, for little Jaden to be here. And who was that one? A girl. Oh, it, it's a girl. Yeah, it's a girl. Amen. <laughs> And a beautiful and a beautiful girl at that, amen. <laughs> and a beautiful girl, that's so lovely. And then we have little little Royces joining us here today, which we're so glad that he can be here with us too. Which is so 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 special to have that. And um, and I just know the the babies keep on rolling in, and they keep on coming. I think there's something like eleven. 11 babies in this 12 month period at this stage so if we can if we continue at that rate with um, the average lifespan of 85 years that's about 850 people in the church <laughs> it's pretty good hey so we're getting close to that thousand like Isaiah says the least of you will be a thousand amen yeah. <laughs> that's so good it's just so awesome um, well thank you Lord why don't we just just briefly pray and and um, and we'll get into the word this morning, Lord? I want to thank you, Father, for this morning. I want to thank you that we get to gather here together as your people, Lord. And Jesus, we just want to acknowledge you as King, uh, King over our lives, uh, Lord. We thank you that uh, that Jesus, you are speaking, and Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and to have your way as uh, as we. Open up your scripture this morning. I ask that you would give us ears to hear what it is that your spirit is saying to the church. We thank you for this exciting time that we're living in. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you're going ahead of us, Lord, the way that you are, um, are setting things up, um, even, Lord, right across this community for just uh, incredible things to, uh, to take place in our midst. But, Lord, we pray more than anything. We just ask, Lord, that your, that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done, Lord, here in circular head, as it is in heaven, Lord. We pray this in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. And they all said, Amen. Amen. It was interesting, Daniel had a vision of, um, of, the, of the doors. You, you've seen those doors. It, it's, um, I don't want to get too bogged down in this, but, uh, but if anyone follows the Hebrew calendar, um, which is obviously the calendar that... Um, that marks a lot of the festivals and, and the holy days, um, obviously throughout um, Judaism and, um, and that type of thing, is, um, is we're actually in the year 5784. 5784. Now, obviously, in a Western culture, is, is the start of our new year is on, on January the 1st and it finishes on December the 31st. But on the Jewish calendar... Um, the beginning of the Jewish New Year is actually coming up on October the 2nd, uh, which is actually a really significant um, period of time. But the year that we're crossing out of, 5784, um, in, in, in Hebrew, every number actually has a symbol. And so there's this, this symbology for the number. And actually, the number 4, 5784, this particular year we're coming out of, the, um, the, the, the picture of that number in, in, in Hebrew is actually the picture of an open door. Uh, so we're actually coming out of a year of God opening doors for us, opening opportunities for us. And I think we can see 
the way that the Lord's done that, even in the life of our family, we've, uh, we thought at the start of the year God was just opening up one door to a new building and then all of a sudden other doors open and other doors open because it's actually we're, we're in the year of the open door. Um, and, and I want to encourage you over the next two weeks as we come up to October the 2nd, which is, which is the, the beginning of the Jewish New Year, expect the Lord to be speaking and expect the Lord to actually be setting things up uh, for you as you cross over into that um, next year. And, and the reason that I say this is I could sit here today and just share testimonies of what the Lord has done around this period of time every year. It really is it's a significant period of time on God's calendar. So really lean into that. We're stepping into a year called 5785. And as Braden, as Braden said um, to us on Wednesday night, is this is actually a year of redemption, is we're stepping out of the year of open door the year of the open door into a year of redemption. What does that mean? It means that things that may not have gone how they should have in the past is God is making wrong things right. He's making the crooked path straight and he's actually even going back into your past and he's actually washing things away and it's a year of the Lord actually setting things right. Amen. And so that might be even things that have happened throughout um, generations or decisions that even you may not have made, but the Lord is making the wrong things right. He's making the crooked path straight. So get ready for a year of, of redemption. But this morning, um, what I really want to uh, speak on is, this is the title of today's message. So if you want to write it down, if you want to do that, you can. But the title of today's message is this, is seven keys to breaking ties with Egypt. Seven keys to breaking ties with Egypt. And we're going to go to the book of Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. And I um, believe that there is something in this story here. There's some nuggets and there's some real keys for us as we transition, as we shift from, uh, from this, this, this one year to a new year, as we shift from one season to another season. And there's some lessons for us to learn here. Now, just a little bit of background is the, uh, the Israelites uh, actually went into Egypt. As we know, um, Joseph uh, was, you know, he had a, a gift of dream interpretation and Joseph had favor uh, with Pharaoh. And so... Um, so as we know, there was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Jacob and his 12 sons, uh, one of them was Jacob. He had the gift of dream interpretation. The Israelites went into Egypt and they got the best land and they were, they were blessed and they were taken care of. But there come a point in time in the Israelites' journey where, where they used to be comfortable and where they used to uh, be flourishing and where they were in a place of blessing, all of a sudden things started stirring up. And the Bible says there was a Pharaoh that arose that knew not of Jacob, that didn't know the, uh, the, 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 the reason why the Israelites were there and all of that type of thing. But the time come for the Israelites to transition out of Egypt. But as we know, and, and I know that I've said this a lot over some time now, but that the issue wasn't getting the Israelites out of Egypt physically, is it was one thing for the Israelites to come out of Egypt physically, but, but the Israelites had to get the Egypt out of their hearts. And, and, and even though they come out of Egypt physically, is emotionally, spiritually, relationally, there were still these connections that actually caused them to be attached to a previous season, even though God was trying to bring them into a promised land. And, and so if, if we're going to step into the promised land that God has for us individually and corporately, we have to deal with the attachments and we have to deal with the things that are actually keeping us uh, bound even to a previous season so that we can step in to the season that, that God has for us. So we're going to read together. Exodus chapter 13 verse 17. So if you want to follow along, we're going to have this up here, but if you want to follow along in your Bibles too, this is what it says. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though it was shorter. Isn't this interesting? God didn't lead them through the, the Philistine country, even though it was shorter. Who knows is we don't serve the God of 
the shortcut. <laughs> we, 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 short, we serve the God who values process and he values doing things in the right way, in the right order. But it says here, for God says, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around the desert road by the Red Sea and the Israelites went out from Egypt ready for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the Israelites swear an oath and he had said, God will surely come to your aid. And then you must carry the bones, my bones, up with you to this place. After leaving Sukkoth, they camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way. And by night, in a pillar of fire, to give them light. And I just want to say too is, um, is, is get ready for what the Lord's about to do in the next few months because it's going to be absolutely epic. I've been on the phone to a couple of people this week. Um, we're getting ready to set up a, a, a massive conference to kick off 2025 that's going to, I think it's going to set next year on fire. There's, there's new stuff that's opening up. So get ready because things are really about to escalate significantly in, in what I think God's doing. But, but what are we doing? We're following the pillar of cloud. Amen. We're following the pillar of fire. It's not, we're not coming up with things in our own. It's like, oh, well, let's have a program and let's blah, blah, blah. No, it's just following the leading of God. And as you follow the leading of God, things open, doors open, breakthrough comes, and his favor gets applied. But anyway, that's a side thing. In verse 22, it says, Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left the, the place of the people in front of the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Pharaoh, uh, near Migdal at the sea, and they are to encamp at the sea directly opposite Baal Zephon. And Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, but I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all of his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and he took his army with him, and he took 600 of his best chariots along with the officers, other, other chariots of Egypt with the officers with them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all of Pharaoh's horses, and all of Pharaoh's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Come on here. Are you all awake? Got to be careful you don't just get bored there, you know? Otherwise, this is important. This is the Word of God. I don't want you thinking we're not doing this. Anyway, so as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and they were marching and they said, was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us out of the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say it to you in Egypt? Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. Let us stay in our slavery. Let us stay in our dysfunction. Let us stay in a place of captivity. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. But Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. And the Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. And then the Lord will fight for you. You need to only be still. Come on, there it is. And then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Come on, turn, turn, tap the person next to you and say, get ready to move on. <laughs> get ready to move on. It's time to, time to leave some stuff behind. Get ready to move on. Get ready to move on and raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all of his army through his chariots and horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh. 
his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of the Lord who had been travelling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side, so neither one went near each other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all night long he drove back the sea, with a strong east wind. Isn't it interesting? We've had some pretty big winds over the last, uh, the last month or so. It nearly makes you feel like God's sending some, some winds because there's, there's some change that's in the air. There's a change that's in the atmosphere. There's some shifting and there's some things that are moving. And then, the, and then it says that the east wind and it turned it into dry land and the waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen following them into the sea during the last watch of the night. They looked down um, from the pillar of fire of the cloud and at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots. I love that part. God jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they would have difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let us get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. And then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians, their chariots and horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak, the sea went back into its place and the Egyptians were fleeing towards it and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen and the entire army of Pharaoh that had not followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. Survive, but the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right hand and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptian, Egyptians, the people trusted in the Lord, they feared in the Lord and they put their trust in him and in their servant Moses. Isn't that an awesome story? Come on, I, 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 really, I really believe that there's some, there's some keys that, that I've been praying through this week. There's some keys from this story that the Lord has for us because who knows, is, is that even, even though we can be physically delivered from Egypt, there can be still some bondages, some ensnarements and some, some residues, some mindsets that actually keep us in, in, in a place of, of, of bondage. Uh, notice how um, <clears throat> I, love, um, I love what it says here in, if you'll come with me, it, it, 13 verse 17, it says, uh, it says here, is, is that for God said, if they, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Isn't it interesting after, even though they've seen the hand of God, they've seen the provision of God, they've seen the, the 10 plagues that come against Egypt, they're already ready to go back. They're already wanting to go back to their slavery. They're already wanting to go back to their dysfunction. And then over the page here, it says, didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to to um, have served the Egyptians than to die in the desert. So we see this dynamic where even though the Israelites have seen the hand of God, even though they've seen the provision of God, they're still desiring to go back to a lifestyle that they always used to have. They wanted to go back to how it, it used to be. They wanted to go back to their old relationships. They wanted to go back to their old friendships. They wanted to go back to their old dysfunction. They wanted to go back to their old habits. They wanted to go back to what was familiar, even though what was familiar was actually killing them. Are you with me? There comes a point in time where you don't want to look back. 
I love the story in Genesis. There's a story about Abraham and Lot. And, and the Bible says as Abraham starts crying out over this city called Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and, and Abraham, he says, oh God, if there be 50 righteous people in this city, w- would you save it? And, and there ended up not being. Who knows, if you haven't got 50 righteous people in a place, you're in trouble. <laughs> but then he goes on and he says that maybe there's 20 righteous people there, but there wasn't. And he gets all the way down until he just gets to Lot and Lot's family and Lot's children. And then God sends angels to go and bring Lot and Lot's wife out from Sodom and Gomorrah. But who knows is is that as Lot was coming out with his wife and with their children, is they come out from Sodom and Gomorrah, but Lot's wife, she turns back. And the Bible says that Lot's wife, as she turns back, she was turned into a pillar of salt. Isn't that crazy? It's like the first life-sized salt shaker. <laughs> so she was, she, she was fried. But what, what's the moral of this story? Is, is that I don't think the issue was is that she just looked back, but there was some things inside of her heart that was desiring some things that God was trying to deliver her from. And God wasn't going to allow a past season to move into a future season. When God delivers us from the past, is we, we have to ensure that we don't keep looking back to the past, longing for the past. And you know, we can honor the past and we can celebrate the past and we can honor what God's done in the past. But there comes a time where it's like we're no longer just looking at the past. Is we're keeping our eyes on God and we're keeping our eyes on Jesus, come on, to move into the future. Because here today is we're breaking ties with Egypt. I'm not talking about Egypt physically, I'm talking about it metaphorically. Are you with me? You know, for some people, maybe breaking ties with Egypt is there's some, there's some phone numbers on your phone that you need to delete. Come on. Maybe, maybe there's, some, there's some people that you're friends with on social media that you just know that they're not good for you, that you need to just block. <laughs> Are you following me? It is for some people, there, there are some people that you're surrounding yourself in your life and it's like, man, they were such good friends. And I'm not talking about being cold. I'm not talking about being hard. But I am talking about being intentional to realize when the Lord is delivering you from a place, from a time, from a people, is you have to cooperate with the Lord in that process. I heard, I heard somebody say this once and it always stuck with me, is, is that... Um, is is that the, the, we can't speed up the, the plan of God, but man, oh man, we can slow it down. <laughs> and you know, one of the ways that we slow it down is rather than cooperating with God, is we say, oh, I'm just going to keep staying connected here. I'm going to keep dabbling in this. When you know the Lord is delivering you from that situation. And, and, and honestly, in these next two weeks, is be, be really aware of what is it that the Lord is wanting to remove from your life. Because October the 2nd, I'm serious, we're crossing over into a new year. And so, and so what, what are the things that the Lord is calling you to release? What are, the, what are some of the tentacles of Egypt that have you captive that are stopping you from occupying your promised land? Amen? Who knows, is it uh, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, their plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. He has that plan for your life, but it often requires letting go of some of the old things in order to step into the new. So, so key number one of, um, of breaking ties with Egypt is don't look back. Don't look back. Look forward. Burn the boats, as they say. You ever heard that? It's like that army, was it going into, um, was it going to England or something? Spain? And, and, and you know, the commanding officer, he brought, his, he brought all of his troops across to Spain and he said, fellas, light up the boats because there is no way back. And some people, you need to light up the boats so that you sever even the ability to go back to how it used to be. Come on, because if God's been faithful to bring you to this point, you don't want to jump on the boat and go back to how it was. Is this making sense to anyone? Is we can't look back and go back to how it used to be because God has too much for you in your future that is actually unreal. 
But if you stay connected to those things, is, is you won't realise everything that, 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 he, that he has for you. Um, number two, I love uh, one of my favourite uh, verses in the Bible uh, is this, is I haven't given you a spirit of fear. So everyone knows, I haven't given you a spirit of fear. I've given you a spirit of love, a spirit of power. Come on, let's say power. Power, power. come on. I've, I, <laughs> I haven't given you a spirit of fear, but I've given you a spirit of love. I've given you a spirit of power and I've given you a sound mind. Isn't that awesome? Is, is that um, one of the keys in order for us to break ties with Egypt and to transition into where God's taking us is to stay in faith. Is to stay in faith. Who knows, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. It is, 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 is that, 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 that faith is, um, is actually critical and we can choose to partner with faith or we can choose to partner with, with fear. We can choose to partner with faith or we can choose to partner with fear. When the Israelites cross over the Red Sea, as you'll notice, is Moses sends 12 spies into the land. If you've ever read it before. He sends 12 spies into the land. The Bible says the 12 spies, they go into the land of Canaan and, and, um, and, and Joshua and Caleb come back and, and, and they're like, come on, you know, this land is flowing with milk and honey. We can take this land. You know, these giants, they'll be bread for us. We, we, can, we can totally demolish them. We can take the land. Who knows that? But, but then the other 10 spies come back and what did they do? That's like, oh, there's these giants in the land. There's these giants in the land. They're so big. You know, these giants in the land are so massive. We could never take the land. We could never take the land. In fact, it's funny because the Bible actually goes on and it says, we were but grasshoppers in their eyes. You read that part? We were but grasshoppers in their eyes. It gives you this impression that the, you know, the, the ten spies, they, they get their, you know, their tea set all set up and they invite the giants over and they say, hey, come giants and have a, have a cup of tea with us. And they all sit down and they have a cup of tea and they say, hey, giants, how do you actually see us? And then the giants are like, well, we think you're grasshoppers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> so the idea is, is, is that they actually come up with that in their own head, is they come up with a narrative that was contrary to the narrative that God had for them, is God had a land for them that he had promised them, but instead of partnering with faith, they partnered with unbelief and they partnered with fear to say, we can't, we can't take the land, amen. Who knows, without faith, it's impossible to please God. We walk by faith, come on, we walk by faith and not by sight. Here's what faith does in your life. When you get a bit of faith in your life, it creates this vacuum. And, and, and it creates a vacuum where it's like, oh God, I'm going to step out in faith. Whether it's like, I'm going to step out and I'm going to take that job. I'm going to step out and I'm going to start a business. I'm going to step out and I'm going to ask that girl out on a date. Uh, or in our case, ask a boy out on a date, whatever it is. But I'm going to step out in faith. But you know what faith does? Is faith creates a vacuum that actually pulls on heaven to come and fill the vacuum. So without faith, it's impossible to please God because faith in your life, when you step out in faith, heaven has to respond because what else is going to fill the void? I want to inject some faith in you today. Maybe it's faith to be like, man, I, I don't know how I'm going to fill this position within my workplace. I don't know how my future is going to work out. I don't know how this business deal is going to go. Whatever it is, I want to encourage you to fill your life with faith because faith Fear will tether you to Egypt. Come on. Is faith actually allows you to walk in freedom? Hello. Faith actually is a prerequisite to walking in freedom. Because walking in freedom 
But let me put it this way, is, 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 is faith causes you to trust in Jesus. Are you with me? Faith is like, I love this, it's like, you know, we do this thing or buy this building or whatever, and we just say, like, you know, God, if you don't come through here, we're totally screwed. And I don't mean, you know, I mean screw, putting a screw in the wall. You know, we're totally, we're finished. We're toast, you know. That's exactly how you should be. Yeah. It's like, God, if you don't come through in this situation, we're toast. That's what walking by faith is. And so the issue was, is God actually had to deal with fear. And unfortunately, we read about the Israelites ended up going into the desert, into the wilderness for 40 years. Why? Because they were partnering with fear rather than faith. And and, and you you could be stuck a slave for the rest of your life if you keep partnering with fear. But it's when you step out in faith and trust that we serve a good God... We have a good father. That's when momentum starts happening. Are you with me? And, and unfortunately, the Bible says that an entire generation had to die out in the wilderness because they didn't have faith to come into agreement with what God was wanting to do in the earth. Amen. So the second key is faith. And I just want to get you and just, you know, just... Inject you with some faith. You know, we just, we need, we, we really do, we really need faith. Number three. The Bible says, is that by day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way and by night, a pillar of fire to give them light. So God was training them to be sensitive, to be led by the pillar of fire at night and the pillar of cloud by day. Isn't that powerful? Pillar of cloud in the day, the pillar of fire by night. But God was actually in the the cloud. (laughs) And God was actually in the fire. So what was God trying to get them to do? He was trying to get them to trust me. Trust my leading. Trust my guiding. Trust me that I'm going to lead you out of here. Now, that would have been fairly easy up until a point because if you've got a massive pillar of fire in front of you or a massive pillar of cloud in front of you, it's, 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 it's probably relatively easy. Where things would have got difficult is when Pharaoh's chariot showed up. Come on. So they're there and they're following the fire, they're following the cloud, they're following the Lord and they're staying in step with Him and it's all lovely. And then all of a sudden, the chariots and the swords are chinging and everything's starting to happen. And so then the Israelites have this massive decision to make in their minds is are we going to focus on where God's leading or are we going to focus on the enemy? Are you with me? Is it, It is so important that we stay focused on what God is doing and what God is saying and not being so enamored by what the enemy is doing or what the enemy is saying. Are you with me? Because God will deal with the enemy if we keep our eyes on Him. If we stay surrendered to Him, He'll deal with the enemies in our lives, but we have to, we have to, to, to trust Him. Are, are you with me? And so the question is, is what are, you, what, are you, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Because for us, is our job is to keep our eyes on what God is saying and what God is doing and where He is leading and not on what the enemy is saying and not on what the enemy is doing and not on what the enemy is leading. I love, I love the Lord's Prayer. If anybody's ever prayed the Lord's Prayer, you know, it goes on in the Lord's Prayer and says, Our Father in heaven... So that it's it's as if it's like you're praying. It's like, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's like this place of it's like, it's like putting your attention on our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Is is that when, when, when we fix our eyes on God, 
we'll see that the things of this world become strangely dim. And so we need to train ourselves to not be focused on the chatter of the enemy, but to be focused on what is heaven saying and what is heaven doing. Are you with me? Because, because here's the thing is, is heaven is not coming into alignment with earth. Earth is coming into alignment with heaven. And, and, and so what happens when we focus on the chatter that's going on around us, we get bogged down in, in, in mind games. And this is why Ara and Braden talked about the armour of God. This is why it's very, very important. It says, put on your head the helmet of salvation so that you're not entertaining any lies from the enemy that say, you're just a grasshopper. You know, you, you know this isn't going to work out for you. This isn't going to work in the right direction. We, we keep our eyes tuned into this is what God is saying. This is what God is doing. This is what heaven's saying over this situation. And then we continue on here. And it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that beautiful? It's as we become acquainted with what God is saying over a situation and we come into alignment and we believe and said, God, if you've said this, if you've promised this, we're going to contend for this until it's as here as it is in heaven. This is powerful. So, no, so number one, don't look back. Are you with me? Because God is shifting us and God is... Is this making sense this morning? I'm not going to give you all the seven keys because we don't have time this morning. But, um, so if that's what you're worried about, don't want to keep you here for another hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> we'll, we'll be wrapping up very, very soon. But, but the Lord is wanting to bring us out of anything that would... Who, who knows? Is the, the Bible actually says, Jesus come to set the captives free. Isn't that awesome? So what are we talking about here this morning? We're talking about trusting in Jesus and Jesus come, come on, to set the captives free. He come to break every yoke. He come to break every curse. He come to break every shackle that would hold you back from the life that you used to live so that you can live a life and a life abundantly in Christ. Isn't that awesome news? And so over this period of time, the next two weeks is get ready to step out of Egypt because we're breaking ties with Egypt, breaking ties with your old life, your old ways. Why don't, Jaden, you come and play on the keys. So number one, don't look back. Don't look back. Number two, stay in faith. Stay in faith. So I've not given you a spirit of fear. I've given you a spirit of love, a spirit of power, and a sound mind. As, as, you, know, you know what faith is? is? Faith is this eager anticipation that there are good things just around the corner. Come on. Faith is actually believing that God's got things sorted in your future. And so if there's worry or fear or concern that you've got about about your future, I want to encourage you to give that to the Lord this morning. Surrender that fear to Him. Surrender the anxiety to Him and fill it with faith. Fill the void with faith. And you'll see that when you step out in faith as it just starts attracting heaven's supply and heaven's provision. Number three, keep your eyes on heaven. Keep your eyes on God. Because we're not living earth to heaven, we're, we're living heaven to earth. The Bible actually says this, is, is that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. It's a beautiful scripture. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. In fact, this, um, this passage here in Exodus, it actually goes on. And, and once the Israelites have crossed over, Moses and Miriam actually write this worship song. 
and, and the whole next chapter is actually devoted to actually thanking the Lord for what he's done and thanking the Lord for where he's taken them and lifting their, lifting their eyes so that they put their eyes back and thank the Lord for what he's done. You know, one of the most powerful ways to get acquainted with what heaven is doing is worship, is worshiping the Lord, is, is giving praise and adoration to him, is lifting him up, giving him glory. Amen. so good well we got three done and I think that'll be enough Um, I had another four but I'd love for us just to all stand here this morning as we close up thank you Lord come on I want to encourage you that God has a promised land for you. He has a promised land for your family. He has a promised land. All of his promises are yes and amen. But we've got to cut the, cut the cords, cut the ties, and maybe even just now as Jaden's playing, just ask the Lord and say, Lord, is there anything that's holding me back to Egypt? Maybe there's some relationships maybe there's some things you just got to say man I'm gonna I'm gonna cut some cut some ties I'm gonna cut some cords because I know that this is holding me back from where God's calling me to go maybe you've entertained fear in your life this morning you can give that over to Jesus but just allow Jesus to deal with that Or maybe you've become just overwhelmed by the situations and the circumstances of your life and it's become overwhelming and you just need to to fix your eyes on Him again. You need to fix your eyes on what Heaven's saying, on what Heaven's doing. And as you fix your eyes on Him, you'll notice how the issues and the problems that you're facing will grow strangely dim. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, I want to thank you so much, Father, for this morning. Lord, I want to thank you for every person that's in this room today. Lord, I ask whatever it is, Lord, whatever's holding us back from fully surrendering, that we would give all of those things over to you, that we'd surrender all. And that your peace that surpasses all understanding. It was interesting when, when Tanya, Tanya prayed that earlier on, that, that peace that surpasses all understanding. I just, I just, just felt that so tangibly in my spirit. And um, I even just encourage you now, if you want to just put your hands out in front of you, whatever, whatever it looks like you, just as a posture of surrender. And I'm going to pray for that peace that surpasses all understanding to come and to guard your heart here this morning. So Holy Spirit, just invite you to come and just to release that peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. Lord, I pray that even as we're Closing out this season, 5784, Lord, I pray that everything that needs to be done in us over the next two weeks, that it would be done, that it would be completed, that it would be carried out to completion. But Lord, there would be not one of us, Lord, that has to go and do another lap in the wilderness. That there wouldn't be one of us that has to do another lap around the mountain, but that we would continue to move with you, Jesus that we would continue to move into everything that you have for us individually. Lord, I pray, I pray for a faith, Lord. I pray for a faith, God, to come upon each one of us, that we would be infused with faith, Lord. That God, when there's that prompting, Lord, when we know that you've called us into something that 
that we wouldn't that we wouldn't be bound in fear that we wouldn't be shackled in fear but that we would be infused from a faith that can only come from you god